Hey, how's it going? This is another episode of Not Your Nerdy Neighbor, and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at some beef chuck boneless country style ribs. Uh, these ribs do take a little bit of extra uh, care to get them tender. Uh, however, if you treat them low and slow and with a little salt and pepper or even a little garlic powder, maybe some rosemary, oregano, uh, you can have yourself a delicious lunch or dinner. So we're going to be digging into that today. So yeah, these are beef chuck country style ribs. Uh, they are boneless. Uh, they do have some nice marbling in them, some fat caps. I'm not actually going to remove any of the fat from these because these were a uh, higher class they're trimmed up of anything that should be inedible i don't see any uh gristle or just chewy crap you can't that's not edible so what i'm gonna do is now i'm gonna take some rub some butt barbecue seasoning and i'm also going to take some yellow mustard uh, one of my discoveries in my time barbecuing is that uh, mustard, if you put a little mustard on the outsides of these, you really don't taste it afterwards. You're mostly tasting your seasoning, uh, but it can help your rub stick to the meat, whether you're doing a pork butt or you're doing another cut of beef. This can actually help. in getting your seasoning to stick. And I'm not putting a ton on. I, I'm just kind of using this as a, a bit of a glue to keep my seasoning on the meat. Because by default, if I just put it on bear meat, yeah, it'll stick, but it won't stick as well. And as the meat starts to cook, it starts to, uh, the moisture starts to cook out and then a lot of the seasoning starts to fall off. Uh, the mustard helps keep the seasoning on the meat and if you get little pieces like the, like this one that kind of fall off and just they're little bites for the the chef as as the meat's cooking so not a a big deal and i have never actually done this with mustard before so this will be something new for me too uh, but i doubt it will taste bad at the end this should be really damn good at the end and now I'm gonna rub my seasoning on here the generous amount just to get most of the meat covered I'm not trying to encase it in seasoning that would be way too much but I just want to get mustard stick into the seasoning stick into the meat and normally for other cuts of beef before you throw it on a grill or a smoker you would want to let it come up closer to room temp however for these since i'm cooking them on on a much lower temperature for uh, probably two to three hours I'm not, I'm not as concerned about that. If it was a New York strip or a ribeye and I'm wanting to sear it on the grill, that would be a much bigger deal. But in this situation, it's not, it's not as much of a problem. So I'm actually just gonna throw these uh, right onto the grill, right onto a grease grill. I just greased up with some canned uh, canola cooking spray. I think I just used Pam. Uh, right on the grates and then I have a water pan in there to help with some of the moisture I just filled a bread pan with some tap water that's it doesn't have to be filtered or anything it's just for moisture but uh, I will get into that once our smoker is up to temp okay friends welcome back our grill is almost to temp I'm set it for 250 which should be just high enough because the goal temp we want inside of those ribs for them to just completely fall apart is 225. You really can't get them much hotter than that without turning them into pieces of leather. So I uh, just have a water pan. I put the hottest tap water I could get into that pan. If you actually want to boil water and put it in there, you're, you'll get kind of ahead of yourself which in this case is good. You can tell by the water vapor coming off that water's gotta be at least boiling at this point. And periodically while this is grilling, uh, you'll want to add 
more water to the grill. Well, to the to the the pan that you have in here. So I am just putting those right on, and I will check on those about every half hour, 45 minutes, just see how they're looking, check the temp. But other than that, this is kind of a set it and forget it. It's a great project if you happen to work from home and you want to set something, let's say, at lunchtime and then have dinner ready later on. Uh, this is a great way to do that. You can also do that with uh, a rack of baby back ribs. That's another one that takes about three to five hours if you're if you're doing it the way I do it. Uh, you you uh, smoke for three, you wrap for two, and then at the very end, uh, what I'll do is I'll put some sauce on there, crank up the heat, get a, a nice crust on the outside, pull the ribs, let them sit. But I will see you all later when I go to check on these. Okay, we are back again. Coming back out to check in on the ribs. They're starting to look pretty good. I know they're probably around 155, 160 Fahrenheit at this moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to base these in some of that G.H. Hughes, sorry, G. Hughes barbecue sauce that I used in my first episode for the chicken wings. So I'm just going to put some of that on top. Don't know how that's going to turn out, but it certainly wouldn't make anything worse by any means. So I'm just putting some right on the top. That'll set up and kind of uh, harden slightly. I'll give them a flip. Do the same to the other side. And then once they are up to temp, I'll pull them off and well, first I'll do the fork test where you put a, a fork in there and you twist. If you can do that easily, uh, that's another indicator they, they may be done. But I, I always temp check everything. I don't want to give anyone under undercooked anything, even if it's a beef product. I mean, you technically could eat these, you know, closer to, to medium rare, but they, they wouldn't be as good. It's not the right cut to do that with. So... If you have any suggestions for barbecue sauces or glaze feel free to post them in the chat and I may use them in an upcoming video but we'll let those sit and marinate for a bit let the sauce harden up and we'll be back to check those uh, probe them flip them and throw sauce on the other side I will see you all soon. Okay, we're back again. I believe this is the time we'll actually get to, ooh, we'll get to pull these off. So I'm gonna do that fork test I talked about. Find the thickest piece, turn my fork. Definitely has some give to it. These have a lot of give. Oh, and that one has a ton of give. Yeah, these are ready. And then one thing I do when I'm done is I crank up the heat on the smoker after I take the water tray out and all that just so I can clean all that stuff off. I have a, an aluminum foil uh, diffuser cover on the bottom of my smoker uh, so I don't end up with the grease fire. I've had one or two grease fires. It's done a little a little damage to the smoker itself, but uh, they're pretty inexpensive or you can just make your own out of aluminum foil. I tend to buy the, the pack of them because it's thicker than alu aluminum foil and it's fitted for this model. This is a Pro 22, so I buy the ones that fit the Pro 20 series. But uh, yeah, time to bring these inside, let them rest a little bit, and I'll get to chow down. All right, back in the kitchen again. 
So let's take a look at how these turned out. Oh yeah, like that looks like damn near perfect to me. Cut off small piece, get the taste test. They're pretty tender. They got just a little bit of resistance to them, which is fine. The smaller pieces will be more, more, more tender than the thicker ones. But, uh, oh yeah, if I was served these out and about, oh yeah, I'd be pretty happy with them. Let's try one of the smaller pieces. My dog is going nuts right now smelling this. I gotta get her some lunch. Unfortunately, she can't have any of these. Oh yeah, that turned out perfect. Yeah, those, those, those turned out perfect. So we're looking at I started um, two hours. They took a total of about two, two and a half hours. So that was two and a half pounds of beef chuck, boneless country style ribs. Uh, rolled them, did a light coating of mustard, put my seasoning on there. This was the seasoning I used. And then to put a barbecue sauce coating, I used this G Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce and trying to cut back back on sugar in some areas but I'll uh, I'll post a link to that in the comments uh, until I get verified on YouTube which I said in my ID the link won't be clickable so you'd have to copy and paste it in I know it sucks but it's YouTube they're just verifying things so but other than that have an excellent day everyone and thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel